So in the last video in this series, we talked a little bit about convergence and probability. And that looks something like this. So suppose we have an estimator and we wanted to know if that converged in probability to some parameter. Okay, so for example, x bar is estimating, for example, mu, where x bar is the sample mean and mu is the population mean. And in the last video, we were talking about well, conditions under which we would call a theta hat or a consistent estimator for theta. So the way we would denote this consistency idea uh, put a right arrow. And above that right arrow, we would put a P, and that would say convergence in probability. We talked about that in the last video. Uh, you should go check that out. And uh, we proved something called the weak law of large numbers, which in the context of this example here, says that under very general conditions, sample mean will converge to the population mean. So this is the weak law of large numbers. This is convergence and probability, just sort of in general. We would like to extend our convergence arguments to a, a broader class of estimators, not just sample means. We just made one argument about sample mean. It would be nice if we could use functions of sample means and you, in particular, if we use continuous functions of sample means, turns out we have something called the continuous mapping theorem. It allows us to uh, combine those continuous functions of sample means to make statements about convergence and probability of that continuous function, which is an estimator. So a question you might have is, what is the continuous mapping theorem and how can it help us? First things first, continuous mapping theorem starts with a hypothesis. Namely, given that we have something that we know converges in probability, and at this point you should be thinking about the weak law of large numbers. So we've got this kind of condition in the background. That's something that we can have in the background. We have these, uh, this convergence in probability idea that comes from the weak law of large numbers, and we want to extend that. So we also need a continuous function. Uh, let's call this f of a, and it, it has to be continuous at the limit up here. It has to be continuous at theta. So if we have a convergence and probability statement, so we know that an estimator is consistent for some parameter, and we know that we have a function that's continuous at that parameter value, then the continuous mapping theorem gives us this beautiful statement here, that the function of this estimator that we originally started out with, that's going to converge in probability to the function of the parameter. So that, that's a nice, uh, powerful theorem that we could use to extend this weak law of large numbers. Namely, we, this weak law of large numbers uh, was just a statement about sample means but the continuous mapping theorem, it allows us to uh, give this uh, convergence and probability argument uh, for a broad class of estimators. In particular, any function of uh, a sample mean that's continuous at the limit. Let's take an example. Let's say I've got an estimator that looks like this, one over the sample mean. Now, this is going to have some weird kind of uh, kind of sampling distribution. It's going to be awfully difficult to sort of make arguments about that. And this isn't a sample mean, it, but it is a function of the sample mean. And this function is continuous uh, at, the, at the limit of something that we know converges in probability. So we know from the weak law of large numbers that the sample mean con uh, converges in probability to the population mean. We have that kind of in our background. Uh, but we want to know something about 1 over the sample mean. What does that converge to? But we need one more condition here. Namely, this function is continuous if a is not 0. As long as a is not 0, then, we, uh, then this is a continuous function. We could use the continuous mapping theorem. If we think of, the, if we think of this limit, this limit mu, the continuous mapping theorem will apply when the 
when the limit mu is not zero. We can apply continuous mapping theorem. So that's that's the lesson that we can use here. And sort of in practice, uh, what what we can say is then then you can just see if you plug in x bar there, then then that works. And as long as this condition that uh, mu is not equal to zero holds, the sample the function of the sample mean converges to the function of the population mean, which equals one over the population mean. So putting this whole string of equalities together, we can conclude one over the sample mean converges in probability to one over the population mean. And that would have been a really difficult thing to conclude and it's uh, concluding is a, a fun word to spell. Um, that, that would have been a really difficult thing to conclude just using the definitions of convergence and probability. You, you could do it. Uh, it would be tedious to show. But the continuous mapping theorem gives us a nice shortcut. As long as we can sort of apply this logic, namely use some information about, the, uh, about convergence and probability, we learn things about weak large numbers that tell us about the convergence probability and express our estimator in terms of a continuous function of uh, sample means that allows us to extend the sample mean convergence of probability to uh, to other estimators that are related now this is more general than what we uh, what this uh, first bit Lead, would lead us to believe in particular so if we have a random vector of estimators that converge in probability to particular limits which is in probability or theta 2 hat converges in probability to theta 2 we know that theta 1 hat converges in probability to theta 1 then we could think of a multivariate continuous function instead so if it's continuous if if this multivariate function, two input function, is continuous at the uh, at both of the inputs here, at that ordered pair that goes in here, if we have that, then we get a similar statement of convergence and probability uh, to, to a limit of, of the two. So let's take a quick example here. Let's, let's say we've got the estimator gamma hat and we want to say well what what does this converge in probability to and namely we're going to find out that it converges in probability the mean of x times the mean of y so this is sort of a, a question so let's see what we can do with this and see if we can apply this multivariate continuous mapping theorem. well we already know by the weak law of large numbers a sample means converge in probability. So these are the inputs that we have going into this function. And now the next thing we know is that the function FAB, which is A times B, is continuous everywhere. So we, we don't even need to state conditions under which uh, uh, conditions on the, sam on the population means uh, under which this is continuous. This is continuous everywhere. So we can just apply this function. Next thing we'll notice, if we express this function of the sample means, so that's exactly gamma hat. Uh, that, that's exactly what we're interested in. So if we apply the continuous mapping theorem to this, what we end up seeing is that this uh, converges in probability to the function at the limits of, instead of evaluating using the estimators the sample means we're going to evaluate the limits of those sample means which are the population means and that is mu x and mu y and indeed we have shown exactly what we were hoping to show namely that the sample means multiplied together converge in probability to the population means multiply together. Uh, so this is uh, something that, that is, it would take, again, it would be a tedious delta epsilon proof using the definition of convergence and probability. And the continuous mapping theorem, as you can see, can save us some time 
and trying to um, trying to make these convergence arguments. Now, one question you might ask yourself is why is this important? Continuous mapping theorem is going to be important because this idea of consistency of an estimator is uh, is our notion of what a good estimator is in econometrics. So if we can show that our estimator is consistent for what we're hoping to estimate, then we've shown that it has a nice property that is going to be reliable and it's going to be a, an estimator that we'll be interested in using. Um, so ho hopefully this gave you an idea of what the continuous mapping theorem is and sort of uh, taking you along the journey of, of, uh, of just sort of typing it out uh, showed you sort of how you would use it uh, to uh, establish a, a couple of uh, key facts about, about some simple, uh, some simple continuous functions of sample means.